Hi, it's Joanne here with Rustic Glitter and today we are going to be doing a crafting tutorial on how to make the beaded garland with the tassel. So this is one that I made in the fall. It said thankful and it had the tassel with the ribbon. So I'm gonna do one similar to this, but it's gonna be a Valentine's theme. So in today's project, I will be using two ribbons, jute string, you'll need tape, it could be any kind of tape, paintbrush, paint, and I am doing three colors. So I'm gonna do a red, which these are, are already red. I bought these, I wanna say at Hobby Lobby during Christmas time, you could buy the beaded garland and I just took them apart to use in various projects. So you wanna look for that. I have some that I've already paint it white, and then the other ones I'm gonna paint this pink color. You'll need um, some skewers for your beads. You'll need a bag of beads, and I'll link below where I got these. I also use this craft foam, and I have this basket that I use for when I'm painting, so you'll see in the tutorial how I use this. And, I have this template that I designed for my tassel. Um, if you are making tassels to resell and you wanna stay consistent, this will help you get the same exact size tassel every single time. There are several tutorials on how to wrap it around your hand or wrap around various things, but sometimes it just doesn't come out as even. And so I like my things to be exact. So. I designed a few of these, and finally this was the design that I found that worked the best for me. So these are available on our website. Again, I'll link that below, um, and I'll show you how to use that. And I'm going to put a tag on the end of mine. You can do two tassels on the end, or you can do like this one. I did the oval tag, and this is like a raised, lettering that I glued on there and I added a little bow. So several different ways that you can make these beaded garlands. I love them. This is such a great way to add some color and just something different to like a tear tray, coffee tables, mantles. You can make long garlands and hang them. So several things you can do. Today I'm going to be using 30 um, beads. This one I want to say was like 20 but if you really want it long so that you can wrap it around, then you want probably around 30 to 40 to depending on how big of a space that you're wanting to wrap it. So I'm gonna show you how I make mine. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. So let's get to crafting. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you are going to want to paint the beads um, and if you're gonna do like a tag or anything, anything that needs to be painted needs to be done first. So that is something that we wanna get done so that it has time to dry. Some of these beads I've already painted, um, so they're already dry. So I'm just gonna be painting the ones that are pink, the red ones, um, I bought them already done. So I'm gonna take my pointed skewers and I'm just going to put them into my craft foam, like so. And then I'm gonna actually just set it aside. And then I'm gonna take this little basket that I showed you, and I have this longer skewer, and it's not pointed on each side. And I'm gonna string my beads onto this. And sometimes when you paint it over them, they get kind of stuck. And if some of these beads are not the same in the middle, so they're a little, some are a little bit tighter. So then I use this basket and I kind of thread it through and then I space them out so I can paint them like that. And then I'll do another one. Now 
Now the good thing about doing it this way, and if they're a little tight, is that you can actually like turn these to get to all the sides. So these I'm gonna all paint all of these pink. I'm just using a paintbrush. So, uh, you don't want one too big. I don't know what size this is. Oh wait, let's see if I can still read it. It's a number 10. And I got these, I also wanted to say, I think I got these at Hobby Lobby, um, the gold, the rose gold ones. So you don't need a lot of paint to do these. And depending on the kind of paint that you're using, you might have to do two to three coats. So if it's a lighter color, you can get away with um, like two coats. If you want it to be like all color and full and you don't want to see any of the bead come through, then you'll probably have to do three, sometimes even four coats, depending on the beads and how they take the paint and the paint and how it goes on. I'm using a chalk paint and so I like the matte look a little bit better on mine. So all I do is I just paint them. Now, this is not the fastest way, for sure, to hand paint them. So if you're having to make a ton of them, it can get a little time consuming. However, I actually like doing it. And once you get the hang of it, it goes actually pretty fast. So I've tried, you'll see some videos where you can put the paint in a bowl and add some water. And I tried that. And then you take them out and let them dry. And this is what happened. And I'm gonna use these because this one's for me, so I didn't want my beads to go to waste. But I don't know if you can see, there's like a flat ring so you see how they come out? Cause they get stuck to the paper and they, they're drippy. So they just, they didn't dry, they didn't dry very well. I just, I didn't like that. It ended up being more of a mess for me. And when you water it down, you're not gonna get that strong color, that full pigment color. So I ended up having to go back and actually paint them. So that technique was not for me. Maybe I did something wrong, I don't know, but I didn't like it. So like I said, this does take a little bit longer, but by putting them on here, you can kind of turn them and it goes pretty fast. So see, like these are already starting to dry. This chalk paint dries super fast. And if it's loose, it might move around, which that's okay. You can just kind of let it go, turn. Now with this light of a color, I could actually just do one coat and call it a day, but there are a few spots that I think need to be a little darker. So I'm gonna do two coats on mine. And so like I said, chalk paint dries really fast. So I can go over here Okay, so these are still drying, but I want to take them off of this thicker skewer because once they dry, the paint around it kind of makes it a little hard to get off. So, um, like I said, they're still a little wet, which you can just be careful if you're taking it off. But if you need to, you can always touch it up. You might have to twist them. And then you're just gonna slide them onto here. Now you don't wanna do this when they're like really, really wet, cause then yes, you're gonna ruin the paint, but these are almost dry.
All right, so we're done with that. I'm gonna set this aside. And I'm gonna paint my tag the same color as the B. So I'm gonna let that dry, let that dry. Now we are going to work on our tassel. And I already have my jute cut and you want one piece at about 46, about 46 inches. And then the other piece I cut in 180 inches for that one. Okay, so the 46 inch piece is what you're gonna put the beads on. And the 180 is going to be your tassel. Okay, so now you're gonna get your template that you're using. If you're not using a template, then there, like I said, there's other tutorials where they're wrapping it around their hands like this. Um, that just doesn't work for me because I want a bigger tassel. So that's why I came up with this little template thing. Okay, so I am going to tape this down and you wanna tape it along the top. And then you just want a little tiny piece here because otherwise it's gonna get in the way. So then you're gonna line this up to the bottom and I'm just gonna hold it, and then I'm just gonna start wrapping. And about probably like halfway, I'm gonna start adding in my other ribbon. You just because I want it to be mixed in with the jute. I don't want it to just to be on the top. And so this can be a little bit longer. Um, you're gonna trim it all at, at the end anyway. So on here, I kind of take it at an angle and then come up and kind of go at another angle just so that way when I tie it all together, it is kind of separated, if that makes any sense. Okay, so then I'm gonna trim it. Again, you're gonna trim it when you're completely done so it doesn't matter. Okay, then I'm gonna wrap some more over it. Okay, and so like I wrapped a little too much because you do want some left over to actually wrap the tassel. So if that happens, then just unwrap it. Then I'm gonna add it back in. Sometimes I get a little wrap happy. I just wrap, wrap, wrap. Okay. Then I'm gonna do a few more. Okay. Then I'm gonna add in this ribbon. And I'm only gonna do it one time. Be careful not to cut this. Okay, so then I'm gonna wrap it some more. And you want about the remainder piece, you kinda want it to be about 25 inches left. So if you have to measure that, let's see. Oh, sorry, I went to go measure it. I can wrap a little bit more to there. Let's go to there. Okay, so you want to end on the bottom right here. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take that off. You can just rip it. You might have to pull a little bit down. And you wanna squish it. You wanna squish this ribbon together. Just 
rip that off. Okay. And then you're going to tie this up here. Just pull it as tight as you can. When you take it off, you'll have to maybe tighten it even more if you need to. Usually it's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna double tie it. Okay, so now you're at this point of your tassel. So you've tied the top off and you're going to take this piece for the beads and kind of get it out of your way. Now you have this long piece, which is about 25 inches from your tassel that you've left. And this is what we're gonna use to wrap around the tassel so it looks like this. You can do two separate pieces, but I found this to be the most secure because what would happen is if you could glue it, um, but sometimes this would come undone. So I found this to be the best secure way. So let me see if I can explain this and show you. Okay. So this is the part that we're gonna to use to wrap it, okay? Now you're gonna to need to know where it's coming from, so you might wanna leave that pushed up a little bit. So it looks like that, okay? Then you're gonna take this bottom piece and you're gonna make like a little loop at the bottom. You see that? Like this little loop? And you wanna make sure you hold that. Okay, so wherever you're holding, then you're gonna wrap, you're gonna kind of wrap above you're gonna wrap above your finger. Okay. Make sure your piece stays looped so you remember which one it is because you're going to have to pull that. Just keep wrapping. And what you're going to do is you're going to wrap until you're about the length of the tassel. So here, I'm a little bit longer so I can keep wrapping. Probably one more. Let's see. Okay, so there we are. So now, so you see how it's about the length of the tassel? So now pull it tight. Make sure you're holding that loop. So now you're gonna take this piece and go through the loop. So here's your loop. You're going to take this piece. There we go. And go through that loop. Okay. Now you're going to take the piece that you just put in and the top piece of that loop. Okay. And you're going to pull. And it's gonna pull this piece up and you're gonna pull it tight so what it did is it pulled it underneath the wrap part so you don't even see it see like that okay now you have this piece here which it's okay you're gonna pull it on the other side and then when you cut it, you'll be able to see which one it is to pull it down. So now we're gonna take it off of the template here. And now you have it 
perfectly round at the bottom. So all you do, is take your scissors like that and cut. Now you can see which piece, if you pull this, you can kind of figure out, there it is. And you're just gonna pull it all the way down so it, don't pull too hard because you don't wanna over pull it. And then if you need to adjust the wrap part, you can pull it up a little bit and then just kind of, I kind of pounce at that just to kind of give it that little rounded look. So then you have this long piece and all you do is you're just going to trim your tassel. And there you go. There's your tassel. And so see by putting the ribbon in between your wraps, it kind of puts it in between the jute so it's not just laying on top. Okay, so now you're ready to string your garland. So now here, <clears throat> you're gonna have this little piece. We don't wanna cut it <clears throat> because you don't want this not to come out. So I just put like a tiny drop of hot glue. And just kind of flatten it out. Okay, and then on this end, you're gonna put some tape so that you can string your beads. And then just kind of pinch the top of it so it's Okay, so now let's get our beads, which they should be dry by now. Okay, and I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do white. Sometimes these beads are smaller on the inside. Okay, so now when I get to this part, you just have to make sure you can pull it over those pieces that you've hot glued. So I'm gonna do white, pink, and red. I mean white. White, red, and pink. And my red one is a little bit smaller, but that's fine because it gives it some variation. See how like it didn't finish and just, I just did not love the putting them in, mixing the paint with the water and then pulling them out to dry. If it gets a little stuck like that, you can use those skewers to help Pull it through. Also, by putting them in the water, I noticed paint gets on the inside. 
So then it makes it hard to string it. So that's what was happening right there. Okay, so now it looks like that. So what I like to do, is I like to add a little bit of super glue to the last one. I kind of just get it inside that, the hole of the bead and just push it down, that very last one. So that one doesn't move. And then you're gonna do that on the opposite side too. So that way you have two stationary beads, okay? Then you're gonna tie this end in a knot. And you probably have to do like a double knot, depending on your beads. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. And push it down. All right, and this, <clears throat> oh, I did not paint the back of that. So, we're not ready for that yet. So let me paint this and then I'll come back. So you definitely wanna make sure that all your pieces are painted beforehand. So now my piece is dry and I'm just gonna give it a light sand to smooth it out. So the chalk paint, it, can give it kind of a rough texture. And if you want to distress the corners, which I normally do, but I'm not going to do that on this piece, then you can do that too. Now my intention for this was I was going to put love on it like I did my thankful, but I cut it too big. So, since this one's for me, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna improvise here and hope for the best, right? So I am going to write on mine XOXO. So I'm using a white paint marker and I'm just gonna do, Actually, you know what? I'm trying to think. I think I'm gonna do that at last because I don't want it to get messed up and I wanna show y'all how. Okay, so now I'm going to string this through and bring it all the way up. And if you can get it, whatever you're, putting it on, you can string it back through so you have it in there twice. And try to get it as close as you can. And then I'm gonna tie a knot through it. And then just tie it. Might have to do like two, two knots. Make sure it's tight and secure. Okay, 
what type. So I just put a little bit of tiny glue here. Kind of get on the fibers of that jute and then you can just trim it. Okay. So now here is your beaded garland. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put XOXO on here. There you go. Valentine's Beaded Garden is all done. All right, so that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you wanted to add a bow, which I don't really think I have the room for it, but let's, let's just see real quick so I can show you how I did that. It's small, it's harder to it's a little bit harder to get those tails and twist them on this little tiny bow. So I think what I'll do is I'll do that. I think I'm gonna put a little drop of glue just to hold it. And then I think I'm gonna cut another piece. And I'm gonna put that in the back there. And then I use this jute to tie it in the middle and I just kind of wrapped it. These small bows are a little tedious because it's not a lot to work with. And I just wrapped it to get kind of that middle knot look. Before you tie it though, you wanna pull Kind of like, see, like I made the little tails. I'm not sure how this ribbon's gonna work though. We'll see. And then you're gonna tie it off in the back. You're going to want to put like a little glue back there because it's so short that it's kind of wanting to come undone. Okay. So there's that. I'm going to cut these on an angle. So 
So now if I want it to, oh yeah, I think I, I might do that. Then you just glue it at the top there. Now, ideally, I would have preferred this to be 3D letters or a stencil, um, but like I said, this one's for me, so I'm not going to worry about it. I just was trying to do this tutorial to show y'all how I made my beaded garland. So, I hope that helps y'all. Like I said, questions, you can always message me or comment below and I'll answer them for you. So that's it. Thanks for watching.